Hey everybody, the grilling dude is in the house and today we're making a winning recipe. We have none other than Mr. Eddie Jackson in the house. Well, Eddie Jackson's cookbook's in the house and he has a winning recipe that I make for my grandkids all the time. You guys ready to try this? Fire up those grills and let's do it. Like with any good mac and cheese, it starts with a grill and we're gonna put some butter down. We've got about two tablespoons worth right here. We're gonna melt it down, add a little bit of flour to it, and we're gonna make a nice roux. Perfect. And we're just gonna add a little flour at a time. We're gonna keep adding until we start seeing these little balls appear in here. And see how it's getting kinda of thick? That is awesome. Time for a little milk. We're gonna go with some 2%. You can use four, whatever you want. Now I do have this set at 160 degrees, so it's not crazy hot. I don't want to burn this roux. At this point, I grab that wooden spoon. Wooden spoons are better on cast iron anyways. It's not really a spoon, it's more like a spatula. Just continue to make that roux. That's looking pretty darn good. Into our roux now, we're gonna add about a half a cup grated Parmesan cheese. Turn the heat up a little bit more. Let that start melting in there. Add a little more milk as well. Ultimately what we want is about a cup and a half of milk. A cup and a quarter, right around in there. Crank that heat up. We're also gonna add about a half a cup of some Mexican style cheese. Get it all in there. Now it's time to just let this stuff start melting down. That took about four minutes to get to this point where everything is just starting to fuse together. What I'm looking for is right there. See when I do that? And it takes a moment for it to backfill. To me, that's just about perfect. I'm gonna put in some chicken salt. Bouillon, chicken bouillon would do that too. About a teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. Mix it in there. Two more tablespoons of butter. And some fresh cut scallions. A couple tablespoons, a couple tablespoons. All right, I'm gonna to continue to stir this for about three, four minutes so everything is together. Then we're gonna add some noodles. We're at exactly four minutes. We're getting that pull back again, just like that. I'm gonna add a little green Tabasco. The recipe does call for red, but I prefer green. Not a heck of a lot. Just adds a little extra flavor to it. Get it all stirred in. Give a little taste. Oh yeah, that's good. I'm gonna add a little more scallions. I like onions. A little bit more of that chicken salt. By the way, we're cooking on medium heat. We're at about 2, 220, whatever it takes. Mm, that's perfect. All right, I'm gonna cut the heat. And now it's time to put in the noodles. I got some macaroni in here. I'm just gonna put it in to our roux, macaroni, mix, whatever you wanna call it. And I'd rather have too much macaroni than not enough. And here's the reason why. When it comes to inside here, I want enough where the macaroni is just about equal with our roux. Or like I said, whatever you wanna call it. So I, when we put these into the wontons, I don't want them runny. 
And yeah, that was just about perfect. I used the entire thing of macaroni. Can't go wrong with that. A little pasta in here. That's awesome. That looks just about perfect right there. Sliding a little bit. I do want to give it a little flavor taste. Mm. That's going to be amazing in those wontons. All right, let's start on those wontons. For the wonton part of this macaroni and cheese, it's actually pretty simple. Now, I've only got a pan that carries six. You can get the 12s, 24s, whatever. But I'm going to grab, there's one, two, three, four. Hey, I'm pretty good. I grabbed six. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to grab six. And what I'm going to do is just on each side, I'm going to cut it about three quarters to an inch in. Just like this. Just like that. Just like that. Just like that. And what that's going to do is when we, when we put our wonton inside of our muffin pan, it'll allow it to fold up a little bit. Here's our muffin pan. We just take the, actually, we need to spray them down first. I almost forgot. A little non-stick spray. And then I just set them in like that. And these are just about perfect. See how they kind of fold over each other a little bit right here. I'm telling you, it's gonna be great. All right, we need to get our smoker or whatever we're using to heat these up up to 350 degrees because we're gonna throw them down for between six and eight minutes until they're hard. We could take them out and they retain their shape. I got the smoker fired up. I'm not gonna really show you that part. It's pretty simple, but you know what I'm gonna do now. Bring in some of our mac and cheese, just like that. Pretty simple. What I love about these things is that they just hold their shape. So fun. Yeah, let's get a little bit more in that one, why not? Perfect. Now, as if we didn't have enough cheese in here with our Parmesan and our Mexican cheese, we're gonna add some extra sharp cheese to the fun. And throw them back on the smoker until a cheese on top is melted. Four minutes at 350, that's what it took. These things are still hot, I just took them out, but I do want to show you what we're talking about here. <laughs> Sweet, check that bad boy out. Love it. Uh, you wanna throw some more onions on it? Man, I'm telling you, go for it. I got some tamed jalapenos, check it out. All right, the moment we have been waiting for is finally here. Mr. Eddie Jackson, he approved this recipe and made it just like he did with just a little bit of the Grilling Dudes twist to it. It's time to try our wonton mac and cheese. Mmm. <laughs> Eddie knows what he's talking about. He should have been tailgating probably for 20 years. I'm so have I. That wonton is just a perfect little wrapper. Hold everything together for that finger food. Mac and cheese inside there is absolutely fantastic. Those three cheeses go great together. I get a little bit of that chicken salt that we put in there. Mmm, so, so good. I gave it a few extra shallots on top so we get that shallot flavor. Of course, I added a tamed down jalapeno. Mm. 
really love that crunch. And no tailgating is complete without a beer. I got my Boise State Bronco Nation koozie. Go Broncos. You guys saw how we made this. Super easy and you can do it at home. If you do, tell me how it goes. I will talk to you on the next episode. We're going to be doing a meat church recipe. I think you're really gonna like.